When air support is needed on the battlefield, nothing inspires both confidence in friendly infantry and chilling terror in enemy infantry like the silhouette of an A-10 Warthog. It's not for nothing that this attack aircraft has become a true icon of American military aviation, bursting into all sorts of halls of fame with both wings spread. But can Warthog remain relevant for the foreseeable future, given the active development of drones and artificial intelligence technology? As the world stood on the brink of nuclear war in the 1960s, Pentagon strategists realized that victory might depend not only on the nuclear arsenal and the means to deliver it quickly, but also on the ability to effectively support ground forces. The development of attack aircraft stalled greatly after the end of World War II, and when the U.S. Army entered the Vietnam War, its main trump card remained the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider from the Korean War whose firepower was clearly not enough given the conditions of the impenetrable jungle. It was the strengthening of air support that became a key priority for the U.S. Air Force when, in September of 1966, General John P. McConnell, Chief of Staff of the U.S. Air Force, tasked the service with the development of a specialized Close Air Support CAS, aircraft. The United States urgently needed an aircraft capable of resisting Soviet armored vehicles and supporting infantry from the air, breaking through enemy fire barriers. The program was dubbed the abbreviation AX, or Attack Experimental, and work on it began to boil. Six companies submitted proposals, but out of all of them, only Northrop's YA-9A and Fairchild Republic's YA-10A were the ones the U.S. Air Force took a liking to. As a result of some of the tests, the choice was made to go with the latter. In parallel with the development of the advanced attack aircraft, the service commissioned General Electric to develop a gun, the GAO-8, but we'll get more into that one a little later. Fairchild Republic's factory in Farmingdale, New York rolled out the first two YA-10 prototypes in the early 70s. In March 1976, the first A-10 was put into service by the U.S. Air Force Tactical Air Command and by 1984, the number of A-10s delivered amounted to 715 aircraft, including two prototypes and six experimental models. Looking at the A-10, it's hard to believe that this massive and lumbering aircraft could be so maneuverable and deadly. But the first two and most important priorities in the list of his limitless skills can rightfully be considered survival and maintainability. The Warthog was designed to fly from forward air bases to the wildest airstrips, where engine damage from foreign objects is almost commonplace. This, among other things, determines the location of the device's two turbofan engines, General Electric TF-34 GE-100, located high behind the wings in front of the tail with double vertical stabilizers. These have a high bypass ratio of 6 to 1, due to which their infrared signature is close to the minimum, and the location of the engines not only directs the exhaust gases over the tailplanes, further protecting the attack aircraft from infrared homing surface-to-air missiles, but also allows the engines to operate without stops while the aircraft is being serviced or re-equipped. The A-10 can rightfully be considered the terminator among all U.S. military aircraft. Think about it. It can easily withstand direct hits from armor-piercing and high-explosive fragmentation shells up to 23 millimeters, has a backup control system in case of loss of hydraulics, and is designed to fly to the base with one engine, half of a tail, half of a wing, and one lift. I think we can all agree it sounds like something out of science fiction, but during the invasion of Iraq in 2003, pilot Kim Campbell's A-10 came under enemy anti-aircraft fire, and despite damage to one of the engines and hydraulic systems, it was still able to reach the base using manual reverse. Additionally, almost all of the aircraft's major components are interchangeable and can be installed on either the left or right side of the Warthog, making it wildly easy to maintain even in the harshest field conditions. The list of such ambidextrous parts includes engines, vertical stabilizers, main landing gear, and some other components. During Warthog's development, the plan was fairly straightforward. To destroy tanks, one must create a flying tank. It was for this purpose that a 1,200-pound weight was installed on the attack aircraft, this being the titanium alloy bathtub armor. At 1.5 inches, 
38 millimeters thick. It does a good job of protecting the pilot and cockpit. By the way, this was one of the first uses of this advanced metal alloy in the aerospace industry. But is it possible to fly far with a punctured fuel tank, even if you're practically an immortal multi-ton aircraft? Looking for an answer to this question, engineers tried to minimize the likelihood of damage to the Warthog fuel system. All four of its fuel tanks were located near the center of the aircraft and away from the fuselage. Thus, the shells will first need to penetrate the skin of the aircraft, yes, the one that's protected to the max by all that armor, and only after that will they be able to approach the outer skin of the fuel tank. Damaged fuel lines are capable of self-sealing except in cases of very critical damage that exceeds the self-sealing capabilities of the tanks, and check valves prevent fuel from entering the damaged tank. The A-10's creators thought this system through, adding mesh polyurethane foam lining the inside and outside of the fuel tanks to hold out debris and limit fuel leakage if the tank were damaged. The engines were protected from the rest of the airframe by fire partitions and equipment for extinguishing fires. Let's say fortune turns against you and all four fuel tanks are critically damaged. Well, even in this case, there's still enough fuel in two self-sealing sumps for 230 miles of flight. For a long time, we pretended not to notice the elephant in the room, but the time has come to address it. We're talking about the Gao A8 Avenger Automatic Cannon, one of the most powerful cannons ever installed on military aircraft. In fact, the body of the plane was literally built around it. It's probably best known for its memorable brrrr sound when firing. On some test A-10s, the gun barrels were mounted along the central axis of the aircraft, but the cannon fires from the right starboard side barrel around 9 o'clock when looking down the muzzles, and such a solution was recognized as unstable. Thus, moving the gun to the left and aligning the firing barrel along the center line, they even had to move the Warthog's nose gear to make more room for the Gao 8. The dimensions of this deadly hulk are comparable to a Volkswagen Beetle, and the rate of fire is 3,900 rounds per minute, with 1,174 projectiles the size of a beer bottle. Its official specifications say that the effective range is 4,000 feet, with a maximum of 12,000 feet. However, some sources claim that the A-10 was not nicknamed the Tank Destroyer for nothing, as it was able to dispatch enemy armor from an insane distance of 21,300 feet. But like every deadly mechanism, the gun had its own problem. When firing, gases entered the engine, causing it to suffocate. Therefore, the engineers acted simply and brilliantly, making it so that when the pilot pulled the trigger, he constantly turned off the engine ignition system. That is, even if after that it suddenly froze and stalled, it immediately restarted. And even if the formidable Avenger suddenly runs out of power, the aircraft has an impressive array of additional weapons that are great at dealing with any type of enemy armored vehicles. The upgraded A-10C carries up to 16,000 pounds of mixed ammunition on eight underwing and three ventral pylons. These might be 500-pound MK-82 bombs or 2,000-pound MK-84 bombs, GBU-39 small diameter bombs, laser and GPS guided bombs, precision joint direct attack munition, incendiary cluster bombs, combined effect munitions, and mine ammunition. And let's not forget about rockets. Take, for example, the AGM-65 Maverick unguided and laser-guided 2.75-inch missiles and the AIM-9 Sidewinder. And in addition to this whole doomsday arsenal, the A-10 carries infrared countermeasure flares, electronic countermeasure chaff, jammer pods, and illumination flares. The problem with cracks in the aircraft's wings was recognized as critical by 1996, and in 2005, Boeing was awarded a $1.72 billion contract to modernize the wings for the A-10 fleet. However, the upgrade plan was soon rethought, and from 2005 to 2011, the entire fleet of U.S. Air Force Warthogs was upgraded to the A-10C modification. The aircraft received an expanded range of all-weather capabilities, an improved fire control system, electronic countermeasures, smart bomb targeting, modern communication suite including Link-16 and SATCOM, and numerous avionics upgrades. The pilots were also not forgotten, having introduced an improved helmet-mounted targeting system like that of more fresh American fighters. And by 2023, they added a hybrid optical-based inertial tracker, Hobbit, which allows you to separately target and attack six targets with one click. 
So rumors about the end of the A-10's career are, at least for now, greatly exaggerated. Yes, over the years, this device has certainly become something of a thorn in the side of the U.S. Air Force, but pilots, Congress, as well as aviation enthusiasts have all liked it so much that it's unlikely to retire until the mid-2030s. You think the Warthog deserves a place among the newest American aircraft of the U.S. Air Force even after 50 years? Share your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.